what's going on y'all tech me out here i recently upgraded to the new macbook pro m1 13 inch all right did i say that right the new m1 13 inch macbook pro i really debated for a while if i was going to move from my 16 inch to this let's just say I'm glad I did. I wish I did it sooner, actually. <laughs> it is so nice to have the power of this in the size of something that feels like my iPad. But I'm not gonna go down a rabbit hole right now of how I feel about, you know, the new M1 MacBooks. I'll save that for a later video. Y'all can definitely, you know, let me know if it's something you wanna see down below in the comment section. Because for this video, we're talking about tips and tricks for your Mac. And this is ticket talking magic for the biggest that's a common So this video especially is gonna be good for those that are new to Mac as well as those that might be a little bit more seasoned. <laughs> you might grab a little gem or two from this as well. But um yeah, let's get into it. Uh the first trick or tip rather that I have for you is keyboard shortcuts. So this is something that I use a lot, especially for things that I commonly type, like my email address. So I have it set so like if I type in something like partner. E and I hit spacebar, it'll auto complete and put my email address. I also have like my mailing address as a keyboard shortcut, my TSA pre-check number as a keyboard shortcut, and even for certain words or nicknames that I use a lot. There's a lot of different scenarios in which it can be useful for you, but if you're interested in creating your own, the way you go about doing so is go to your Apple logo, we're gonna go down to system preferences, and then we're gonna move into the section that says keyboard. I gotta give me a minute, there we go, I couldn't find it. <laughs> and once you're in here, we're gonna move over to text. And then to create your own, you're just gonna hit the plus symbol in the bottom left, and you can type in the abbreviation that you wanna have. And I'm gonna have it so that anytime I write that, it will replace with tech me out. Just uh, hit return to save that. And now when I jump back over here and I type in test and I hit my spacebar key, it then changes to tech me out. And the thing that I love about this is that it syncs across my Apple devices. So regardless of which one I'm on, I have the same shortcuts on each of them. Now y'all, the feature though that I think I use the absolute most is the shortcut key to search with Spotlight. And that's by pressing Command and the spacebar key at the same time and it'll pull up Spotlight and anything that you type in is then gonna search the computer for it. So this is how I generally will search for apps, just about everything. And the beautiful thing about it is that you can pull that up from anywhere. This is something that I use a lot on my phone and I find myself using it just as much on my computer. But before we move on to this next tip, I just wanna say, if you've been enjoying the video so far, you can feel free to hit that like button down below if you feel inclined to. Now this next one has definitely spoiled me because it's a way to quickly clean up your desktop and it, yeah, I think it spoiled me to the point that I've actually forgotten what my desktop looks like without this feature enabled. So the way that you can quickly clean up your desktop is to take two fingers on your trackpad, click once, and then select use stacks. So I'm gonna deselect it so we can see what my desktop, oh my God, like just the absolute mess. <laughs> but to just quickly clean that up, two finger click, use stacks, and I'm good to go. And I say two finger click because that's how you basically right click or how you click to pull up your menu for something that you're selecting. But when you pull up that menu, you will also see that you can group your stacks in different ways. So in my case, I like to have mine's grouped by the conda file that it is, but you can change it up as needed for yourself. Now, just a little bonus tip, if I wanted to keep, you know, all these items visible on my desktop, I could take two fingers, click once, and then select show view options. And this is gonna allow me to customize the way that the items look on my desktop. So I can make the icons bigger. I could change the spacing of the items there. I could even change the text size. And I could even change the position of the text to be to the right of the icon instead of below it. And I can turn off the icon preview altogether. And you can take two fingers and click and then say clean up by kind. And now it's more of a list view of items up here. Now this next tip is actually a product and it's a product that I have back there that's a little bit hard to see right now, but it's one that I recently got in-house that's definitely impacted the way that I've been using my MacBook. And it comes from our sponsor for today's video, Avanki. They make great accessories, but one in particular that I really like is their docking station. And that's because when I'm home, I like to dock my MacBook and kind of convert it into a desktop setup. And it's with the help of this docking station right here that helps that setup work that much better. So big thank you to them for not only, you know, getting me set up with one of these, but also supporting the channel. And like I said earlier, it's just basically a really great way to simplify your connections to your computer. And it does that by letting you connect multiple peripherals to one device instead of a cluster of cables connected to your MacBook. This saves me time because 
because then basically when I dock my MacBook, I just plug my MacBook into this docking station and my monitor and everything else that is already set up on my desk is instantly connected to my MacBook. So I love the fact that I don't have to sit there and plug in each individual thing because I'm good to go as soon as I connect my MacBook to this. And the thing that I really love with something like this is not only am I able to connect to multiple devices, but I'm also able to use this to power my MacBook. And for all of my MacBook Pro owners out there that have a 16 inch MacBook, this even has enough power to charge that, as it does offer up to 96 watts for laptop charging. But in terms of your ports up here, because this is vital, you definitely wanna make sure you've got what you need here. So basically what we have is one HDMI port, one ethernet port, two USB-A ports on one side, two USB-C ports, and then two more USB-A ports, an SD card slot, and a headphone jack. And when it comes to connecting this to monitors, it can support up to two 4K 60 hertz monitors, so you can have that dual display set up. But if you have an M1 MacBook, it will only support up to one external display. But just overall, a really nice clean docking station. I think I'm gonna probably end up migrating this to actually be mounted under my desk. Just a little food for thought for how you can set up yours. <laughs> Now for this next one, for the life of me, I could not figure out how to make my battery percentage show when I switched over to the new M1 MacBook. I literally thought the option was gone. But guess where it was the whole time? Under system preferences and dock and menu bar. I know, that's what I said, I, that's what I said. I'm, I was just like, okay. Normally I was able to come here, click the battery symbol, and then, you know, tell it to show the battery percentage. Now, you have to go to another area within your system preferences. To get there, we're gonna go to the Apple logo, system preferences, and we're going to navigate to dock and menu bar. But once you're in here, you're gonna select show percentage and that way it'll show the battery percentage next to the battery icon in your menu bar. Now something that I found pretty cool is the fact that you can actually customize your folder icons. And it's really simple to do so. All you have to do is choose a folder that you wanna customize. And after you select it, we're gonna hit command I. And then all you have to do is head over into Safari and find a picture that you wanna use. And you can right click it and save it or you can just drag it on top of the little icon here for that folder and it instantly changes. So now you can see that my Amazon folder icon looks like that. But if you wanna take it back to the default folder icon, all you have to do is hit Command I and then click on the image that you customized and hit delete. And then it's back to normal. Now for me, when I first discovered this, I did change like a lot of my folder icons, but I ended up going back to the default icons. I don't know, for me, I think I just discovered that unless it was the same size and look, of the you know default folder but just a different color i would oftentimes overlook the folder altogether now another thing that i noticed especially in moving over to big sur because yeah i was running catalina for quite some time up until now <laughs> one thing i noticed is that i do get a lot of notifications so if you're the type that kind of wants to customize that and get rid of some of them you can do that by simply going to your apple logo system preferences and then navigating to notifications this is gonna let you come in and customize how each app sends you a notification. So for apps that you wanna make sure that you get the notification for and acknowledge, I would suggest using alerts because then the notification will not disappear until you hit the X in the corner of it. But for other items, I would suggest, you know, putting it on none or banners. That way it comes and goes and you don't have to always acknowledge it. And you can even disable the badge icon for certain ones if you want. So that way, when you look down here, you won't see things like I do here on reminders that says three which I'm actually gonna go ahead and change now because I don't ever wanna see badges on reminders. <laughs> but if you happen to miss a notification, you can still access it by accessing your widget. And the way that you would get to that is to either click on the clock up here in the top right, or you can take your fingers and slide in from the right and it'll pull it up that way as well. But while we're in here though, let's talk about this because just as you have widgets on your phone, you have widgets now on your computer. And I'm, I'm loving this cohesion between my Apple devices. But in looking here at the widget view, you can come down to edit widgets, and this is gonna let you add widgets for the apps that you have installed on your computer. You can come in here and choose which size you want. And let's say for instance, I want this clock widget and I want a medium one. I can just literally drag and drop it where I want it to go, rearrange them as I want. I haven't played with widgets as much on my computer as I have on my phone, but this is something that I do plan on getting more into. Now, if you do want more widgets, you can always go to the app store and then just search for widgets and it'll pull up apps that have widgets but I don't think there is currently a widgets category. Now, while we're in the app store, I do wanna point out something, which is another tip. You can actually download iPhone apps on your computer. And by that, I mean, you know, there's certain apps that are only available for your iPhone or your iPad, like uh, LumaFusion or something like InShot. So right now I just searched for InShot 
is not here under Mac apps, but if I select iPhone and iPad apps, I can then see that application, press download, and run it up here. Now this doesn't apply for every application that's available on your phone, but not your Mac. So for example, Spotify, it's not available in the Mac store and is not available as an iPhone and iPad app to download up here either. But this next tip is known as hot corners. And the way this works is that it'll let you navigate to one of the four corners of your screen and perform a quick action. So let me just show you actually, because I think that'll be best here. <laughs> so if I jump into system preferences and I search for hot corners, I have the option to, you know, go up to the top left and start my screensaver like that. Or I can go over to the top right corner and set it so that it pulls up Launchpad, which is all of my applications. And that way as I'm, you know, working and things like that, if I want to quickly get to either my screensaver or my launch pad, I can do so by just dragging it up to one of those two corners. Um, but you do have some other options in here that you can choose from as well. So yeah. Okay, now the next thing you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you know how to do is customize your dock. So this is where you access your most commonly used applications. And you can easily remove items from here by just simply, you know, long pressing on it and dragging it away. Or you can take two fingers and click on it hover over options and then choose remove from dock. This is also where you would tell an item that isn't currently set to stay in your dock to stay in your dock. You can also come over here to the divider and resize your dock. And if you right click on it, it pulls up your options to do things like turn your magnification on so that when you hover over certain applications, they get larger. You could also come in here to hide your dock. So that way it only appears when you hover over it. And I had it like that for a little while, but I didn't like the little delay. Maybe I'll try it again, I don't know. The delay is only like a second. That's just me being impatient. <laughs> this is also where you can come and adjust the position of the dock on screen. Another feature that I find really useful is the option to enable the path bar and the status bar in Finder. And that's handy, especially as you're getting deeper into the subfolders, whereas the status bar is nice to show you how many items you have selected and the amount of storage space that you have. And for this last tip is the option to turn off document sharing in iCloud. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because this is useful if you're low on storage space, but at the same time, it's not useful if you wanna be able to access all of your files at all times without depending on Wi-Fi. But in order to access this, you have to go to your Apple logo, system preferences, and we're gonna click on Apple ID. And once you're in here, we're gonna select options next to iCloud Drive. And then you would just deselect desktop and document folders. But I will say for me, I like to keep this option selective because I enjoy being able to access my files across all of my devices. And I have more scenarios where I need that than scenarios where I probably won't have a Wi-Fi connection and not be able to access something that might be in the cloud. You get me? Hopefully. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I do hope you enjoyed it. But if you're in the mood to binge some more content, I'm gonna throw some videos on screen right now that you can check out. But until the next one, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.